Journal entries are the name for the annotations in the journal ledger. By them, we recognize and recognize different kinds of assets, liabilities, and equity accounts, and when changes in equity are the result of the recognition of income and expenses, we use income and expenses accounts. Because of the double entry bookkeeping method, when we recognize or debit an asset, at the same time, either we must be recognize or credit another asset, or we must recognize or credit a liability or equity, income or other equity account. In this example of journal entry, we show a transaction which implies an increase in a liability as a counterpart of an increase in an asset. The transaction consists of contracting a long-term borrowing from a bank, by which we collect 60,000 euro at the date of the journal entry. We debit the bank account for the increase in the asset cash bank account, and at the same time we recognize the debt with the bank, that is, we credit liability that stands for the debt we define as our institution. The code numbers on the left of both accounts are taken from the chart of accounts in the Spanish General Accounting Plan, as we will explain further ahead. Suppose now the example of a company which buys machinery for manufacturing purposes, paying 60,000 euro in cash. We recognize the increase in the asset machinery as a debit for 60,000 euro, and at the same time we write down the decrease in the asset cash as a credit for 60,000 euro as well. It means that by extracting the movements in the different accounts from the journal ledger, which contains these two journal entries, the balance sheet will just disclose a sum of 60,000 euro in assets, which corresponds to the balance of the account machinery, since balances of cash is zero after crediting in the second journal entry the same amount we initially debit in the first journal entry. In the right column, we disclose 60,000 euro in liabilities related to the current amount of the non-current debt with financial institutions, that is, debt which is in due within more than 12 months. In the next slide, we find an example of a decrease in the balance of a liability, which corresponds with a decrease in an asset. The transaction is the reimbursement of a loan from a bank for 60,000 euro. We debit the liability, the account current debt with financial institutions, for 60,000 euro and at the same time we credit an asset for the reduction in cash using the account banks and financial institutions demand current accounts euros the next example shows another decrease in liabilities but in this case the counterpart is an increase in another liability. This happens, for instance, when it is less than 12 months for a long-term debt to be in due. In this case, we must substitute a short-term or current liability for the original long-term debt. As a consequence, 
we no longer recognize a long-term debt. We debit it. But in exchange, we recognize a short-term debt in the account current debt with financial institutions for 60,000 euro. This is an example by which we account for an increase in assets and simultaneously recognize an increase in equity. Suppose a company which issued new shares, that is, legal rights issued by units of ownership interest in the firm, which has been acquired by several investors after paying a price of 60,000 euro. The company collects 60,000 euro from the investors and accounts for a debit in cash, which at the same time increases equity, crediting the account share capital, which in the balance sheet stands for the money the company collected from the shareholders in exchange of shares, as a way of financing the company's future operations instead of borrowing money from banks or other creditors. Incidentally, this is an example of changes in equity without changes in net income, that is, without recognizing any income or expense in the profit and loss account. The next example considers the case of recognizing income from services rendered whose price will be collected from the customer in a further date. Revenue from the customer as an increase in equity through the profit and loss account is registered as a credit for €90,000. Since the right to collect the price from the customer is not still in due, we cannot debit an increase in cash as a counterpart of income, but we recognize instead another asset in the balance sheet, which stands for the right to collect the money from the customer using the account trade receivables. This is an example of the accrual basis of accounting by which, in principle, we recognize income when the right to obtain a consideration arises, before the moment the consideration will be eventually settled, when the cash inflow takes place. When a company monthly pays the workforce wages. In the journal ledger, we must write down a journal entry which debits the personal expenses, since it is a decrease in equity. The counterpart is a decrease in assets. We credit a cash account. But when at the time we recognize an expense, the invoice is not still in due, the counterpart of the debit in the expense consists of recognizing a debt with the supplier. Here it is an example of a debit in repairs and maintenance costs, together with a credit in a new liability using the account that relates to this kind of expenses, payables for the rendering of 